Hey, what's up everyone? Today I want to talk about CI's benchmark for AWS or Amazon Web Services and explain to you why it's important, what it is, and why should you care, especially if you want to work in the cloud security space. So CIS or Center for Internet Security is a very popular organization which helps build standards for how do you harden an image which is used by a virtual server. In this case, they also have evolved to the point now CIS is also giving benchmark standards for Amazon Web Service, Azure, Google Cloud, all of them. And in this particular video, we go through the ones from Amazon. Now, there are a couple of ways to know what the latest version is. You can go straight to the CIS, CIS security website, mouthful, and download the latest version and see which ones you comply to. Now, this is a very real business use case for a lot of cloud security engineers out there, especially if you're a beginner, if you've never done this before. In this video, I'm going to walk you through on the console what most of that would look like. But if you want me to do a detailed video on how to do this in an implementation way, definitely let me know and I'll make a video for that as well. Uh, we can. This is also a good one to add from an automation perspective from a Terraform, Terra, Terraform cloud if you're using that. Looking at what I do on the screen, you could use that as an opportunity to see what that would look like from a... Uh, like from an automation perspective as well. Again, if you want me to make a video on the whole Terraform thing, definitely let me know as well. All right, so with that said, let's start with this video and I'm gonna change the view slightly. Maybe that one, that's pretty better. Cool, all right, so now I don't know this. I'm gonna go to the one which is the AWS version. So that kind of gives me an example of it. And I think it gives a good example of what they are and why you need it. But simply put, I would probably say, because it's a globally recognized security standard, a lot of organizations, when they start off with cloud security, they would ask their cloud security engineer or cloud security analyst, who has joined the company to go, okay, uh, we need to be able to have at least a CIS, CIS benchmark compliance. By what that they mean is that, hey, everything that is in the CIS list, which is either a level one profile or a level two profile, I wanna be able to at least hit level one or I want to be able to at least hit level two. That's kind of where they would come from. So as you kind of go through this, you'll probably realize, oh, okay, so it's all about implementing controls. And I would say you're also able to just go ahead and identify services. So if I just come back to here, CIS also talks about the services that are available from AWS, which you can use to quickly map out, hey, what standard of CIS you can comply with. So if you can see, uh, Audit Manager, Security Hub, Inspector, as well as uh, that's another older version of Inspector. And then there's a quick start guide. Essentially what they're saying is you can use these services uh, in AWS to identify if you're automatically compliant or not. But in this particular scenario, we're actually going through a work example of it. And the easiest way, as I said earlier, you can either go to the CIS website and download the benchmark by giving an email, or even easier if you don't wanna give your email away, uh, and if you're okay to go with one version older, which is the 1.4 or 1.2 version, I will probably go for the 1.4 version. That's what's available on there because that's what's supported by Security Hub automatically. And working cloud security means you no need to look for automation. So I would say use this as a starting point. But if your organization is asking you to do, uh, say, more the latest, latest version, download that and see which ones of these can be applied over there as well. All right, so with that said, let's start with the first one. First one is about CloudTrail. Now, the one difference you would find between this and how CI's benchmark has typically worked, that at least the documentation from AWS specifically talks about how can you do it from a cloud, particular cloud service perspective, rather than going, uh, hey, I want to be able to do uh, you know, a particular thing with CloudTrail. Instead of saying you should have auditing, it talks about you can use CloudTrail, which is the auditing service from AWS. So I'm gonna use the first one as an example and maybe we'll just start off there. And instead of going through the entire list and maybe make this a half an hour long video because it's a full project, but if you want me to do the whole CIS benchmark, definitely let me know and I'll uh, do that from an automation perspective. Otherwise, as well in the comment. But the idea is simple. Have a look at the service, the CloudTrail, CloudTrail, CloudTrail. Okay, so the first seven requirements that I have are all CloudTrail related should be enabled and configured at least one of them in multi-region trail, should have encryption address, log validation, should have information going to CloudWatch, S3 bucket to store, blah, blah. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna talk about the first two specifically. Uh, so if I just go to my portal, there you go, that's my portal. And I am just gonna search for CloudTrail. Uh, for people who don't know, this is what Amazon console looks like. And you just go to Amazon console, search for CloudTrail. I already have a cloud trail. Now, this is a good test. Let's see if I'm complying already. 
so I have the name. Oh, look at that. I have it set to yes. So I am enabling it to a multi-region and I have enabled login and have, I, oh, okay. So one thing I don't comply with is the fact that I don't have uh, encryption enabled. So something you might want to look at and I should be looking at this as well if I want to make this particular AWS account compliant to CIS. Cool. So that was one example. Let's move on to the next one. Um, CloudWatch as well as uh, Config and EC2. Actually, worthwhile calling out something about CloudWatch over here. Some of these services definitely make sense from an account perspective. You may choose to go down the, like for example, this is a good one to have where an alarm would ring if, uh, as in, uh, not ring, but you would get a, a notification whenever someone uses their root user, which is the administrator user of an AWS account. You can have log metrics around this as well, but since I don't plan to go into a lot more detail uh, in this beginner video, um, because it's just basically explaining what it is and how you can use uh, a click ops for it uh, or just go to the console for it. Uh, so I would say the next obvious one we look for, look at is uh, config. Okay, if so AWS config, if you're looking at that, one thing I'll definitely call out over here is that config is a paid service. And if you enable that on your, let's just say for just maybe you're preparing for an interview and they definitely talk about CIS benchmark there and you want to enable these services so you can talk about it. I would say it's going to cost you a bit of money, but just be wary just to, to start turn it off if you turn it on. Now, uh, so, but that's the service that you use to make a asset inventory and see if there's a drift between what the asset, like an S3 bucket or any, any other service, what that should have been versus what it has become. So that's where you people use config for. Okay, this is also interesting. It's talking about EC2. Now, this is a environment where I'm not going to create an EC2 instance, but if I had EC2 instances, I would have to look at these and go, which one of these apply to me or not. This is also a good point to raise where CIS benchmark is designed so that it's general enough that everyone can you know, pick that up and at least have, oh, okay, out of the 50 items that are here, 25 apply to me. Whereas not, I have not met anyone yet who has said all of them apply to me. Uh, and so maybe I have not met everyone yet, but I think I would say like this particular scenario, where I don't plan to have any VPCs or any EC2 in this particular AWS account, not every CIS benchmark would apply to me. So, but if I was to do this at scale, if I was to apply CIS benchmark, not just on one AWS account, but multiple AWS accounts, I probably should use some automation and then maybe some of this would be valid at that point in time. Cool, okay, EC2 covered. Uh, I also wanna call out something as I'm going through this, worthwhile noting that the CIS benchmark is divided into four broad sections. One of them is, Identity access management, logging, monitoring, and networking. So the way I would describe this now, we've done so much about networking. We have done so much about logging. Uh, that's also logging. Now we have IAM. It's a lot bigger list for IAM. But I'm going to choose some of these. So let's just say should not have full privileges. Access keys should not be rotated every 90 days. And root, should, root user access keys should not exist. MFA should be enabled for all IAM users. Let's see how good I comply with this. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to my AWS account and I'm gonna search for the home screen, go for IAM, and this is gonna be embarrassing. I can never tell you. Oh no, actually it's not. So root user has MFA. I have logged in with my IAM user, which is great. So I've done the right thing. Okay, so my IAM user currently doesn't have an MFA. So something I need to improve on. Uh, the other condition that I had from a CIS benchmark was, Anyone who has not used the keys for a long time should definitely be deleted. Okay, so I have two that have active keys. One was used in the last, oh, this is the data from security users that I was working off, what, what, 20, half an hour ago. But seems like I have not used this one for 150. So I should just go ahead and go to security credentials and just delete the keys. So action, delete. Uh, no, I don't want to delete that. I just want to, I just want to, I don't want to deactivate. I want to delete this. So this would help me, uh, deactivate. Yes. And now I can delete. Okay. There you go. Cool. So now I am compliant. Well, kind of compliant to most of the things that I called out over here. So, uh, the, I, I wanted to call out the remaining ones over here as well, which are the S3 bucket one block all S3 access. Again, I'm not using S3. I'm not using RDS. I have not enabled a KMS, which is a key management system. So these don't apply for me. 
But something I wanted to call out, these are just the ones that can be automated. So you know how we, when we started, we spoke about the entire CS benchmark list. The way AWS does their documentation is that they would show you the ones which are automated, but they're also kind enough to let you know that the ones that they cannot automate, which you need to spend some time on your own. Like for example, if you kind of go for the down, manual checks that aren't supported, maintaining a current contact detail. This is when you set up your AWS account, you need to have a current contact detail in there. You need to have security questions filled out because in case you lose access to your AWS account, you should have that covered. So things like that, I can understand you can't automate that. You just need to fill out. It's like filling the form for creating yourself as a user somewhere. You have to do them you know, yourself. Uh, but then the other ones that are, are not automated, our uh, automated checks are not supported for, which is I am user receives permission only through groups. Uh, there's still quite a few that have not been covered as part of automation, but Point being, this is what CI's benchmark is usually about, and you're able to kind of use this information to talk about how would you apply CI's benchmark onto AWS environment accounts. This was a walkthrough video, so hopefully you find it valuable. But if you want me to make a video on, say, implementing this on one account, or probably using automation like Terraform for applying it to multiple accounts, Definitely let me know in the comment. I'll be more than happy to cover that in the topic. Also, if you are someone who definitely enjoys a lot more about cloud security and want to learn about cloud security, definitely drop the comment on any questions you have because we create content for cloud security. We do interviews, training uh, for cloud security bootcamp, cloud security podcast. So definitely follow us over here, and we will try and cover the cloud. We, we, and we will try and cover the topic on the next video. Otherwise, uh, enjoy this video. I. I hope you got value from this video and I'll see you on the next one. So make sure you subscribe. See ya. Peace.